What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at how to use the four processes, that's addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, on decimal numbers. And let's start with the addition question. We have 34.5 added to 5.901. And what we're going to need to remember today is to use our place value chart to help us so that we don't make any small mistakes. So with that in mind, let's have a look at our numbers and decide what titles we're going to have to include. And I can see that we've got tenths, hundredths and thousandths in this second number. So let's start with thousandths, then hundredths, tenths, put my decimal back, ones, tens, hundreds, and let's see if that's enough. Now I'm going to put my numbers in place. I have 34.5, 34 is 3 tenths, 4 ones, decimal place, 5 tenths, added to 5 ones, decimal place, 9 tenths, 0 hundredths, and 1 thousandths. But now I have these gaps in my question, three of them, that I can fill with placeholders, which isn't as important in addition, but it's very important in subtraction. So let's get into a good habit and do that now. Put my equals line, and I'm ready to begin adding up. Start at my smallest value, which is the thousandths. Zero plus one is one. Zero plus zero is zero. Five and nine is 14. Carry the one across into the ones column. Put my four in my tenths column. Put back my decimal. Add the four to the five gets me nine, add the new one that we have in there, gets me 10, same thing again, one into the tens column, zero into the ones, and then three, added to my new one, gives me four. So my answer is 40.401, I'm gonna put that just here, 40.401. Great, now let's try and tackle my subtraction question with the same principle, and again, I'm gonna to have to have thousands, hundreds, tenths, my decimal, ones, tens, I'm going to put hundreds, and I'm going to start with my 63.51, has six tens, three ones, my decimal, five tenths, one one hundredth, and then I'm subtracting 5.901, so it's five ones, decimal place, nine tenths, zero hundredths, and one thousandths. But now again, I have these gaps in my question, and now it's super important to put my placeholders because if I don't put a placeholder, I could make a very serious mistake, which we'll talk about in a moment. Put my equals line, and I'm ready to start subtracting. Now, start at my smallest value, zero, subtract one. I know this placeholder we've only just put here, but it's very important. If I didn't have that there, I might be inclined to just put a one here in my thousandths answer, but that would not be correct, let's see. If I have zero, what it means is I actually cannot take one away from zero, so I have to look next door, and I can see I have a one in my hundredths column, which I'm gonna borrow and give to my thousandth, making that 10 in my thousandths column. Now I have 10 subtract one is equals nine, which is very different to the one I would have had if I didn't put the placeholder there. Now I have a zero in this hundredths column, so zero subtract zero is zero. 5 subtract 9 I can't do, so I have to borrow from the next available digit, which is the 3. 15 subtract 9 is 6. Put back my decimal. 2 subtract 5 I can't do, borrow from next door. 12 subtract 5 is 7. 5 subtract 0 is 5. So my answer to 63.51 subtract 5.901 is 57.6. Oh, 09 or 57 and 609 thousandths. Okay, next question I have a multiplication and I have 6.5 multiplied by 43.6. And the little trick when I'm doing multiplication with decimals is I'm actually just going to ignore these decimals for now. So get rid of them, one, two, and I'm going to do it like a normal multiplication question using my column method, starting with my smallest value, six times five is 30, six times six is 36, plus my three, 39, 39. I've got no other question to answer on that top row, so I can just put the 39 in as it is. So the answer to six times 65 is 390. Now I'm gonna do 
3 times 65, but it's not a 3, it's a 30, so I'm going to put my placeholder in place, and I can just do 3 times 5 is 15, and 3 times 6 is 18, plus my 1 is 19, get rid of that little 1 so I don't add it at the end, and then the last row is actually not just a 4, it's a 400, so I need to put 2 placeholders to show this is 100 times bigger, 4 times 5 is 20, and 4 times 6 is 24, plus my 2, 26. Now I just need to add this all up, and I have 0, 0, and 0 is 0, 9 plus 5 is 14, 3 plus 9 is 12, plus my 1 is 13, 1 plus 6 is 7, plus my 1 is 8, and 2 on its own is 2. So my answer is 28,340, but not quite, because don't forget, I ignored two decimals. And the little trick to remember where to put the new decimal place is, how many digits after the decimal did we ignore? Well, we ignored one here and one here. So my decimal at the moment is just here at the end, and I have to move it two places, one, two. So my answer is 283.40, or just 0.4. And last but not least, the division question. I have 45.6 divided by 4. This looks really hard, but it's super simple. All I have to do, how many 4s are there in my 4? I have 1. How many 4s are there in my 5? I have 1, but I then have 1 remainder, which I'll bring over here. How many 4s are in my 16? Well, there is 4. Carry the decimal up, and my answer is 11.4. And there you go. That is how to use the 4 processes, or the 4 operations in mathematics, with decimal numbers. But before you go, have a go at answering these 4 questions yourself to see if you've understood it. Take some time, press pause on the video now, and put your answers in the comment section. Press pause now. Good luck. And there you have it. That is how to use the four operations with decimal numbers. A great lesson for year six, year seven, or year eight maths. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If it has, check out the mathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos to help you with everything you need to know about maths. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Peace out.